Uh, now here's a brand new bell never seen. That is an inside out bell. So if we go backwards and we see uh, water, what is uh, changing, uh, you also have to put that into uh, a form of lawfulness, which is what geometry is all about. So this is the geometric drawing okay, of that form and how it comes into being. Basically, may not be here, but that doesn't mean that we can't work with something that can't be here or there isn't a, a way of studying it. And that's what the earth, water, air, and fire, the different forms, are indicating to me on how to find these things. Alright, the next process, of course, you know earth, and you know this is water and this is air. The next one is fire. And fire is with transformation. And the transformation one was a difficult one for me. Uh, not that these were easy, but this one was a tough one. Now, one of the things I found out about fire is fire is transformation. So what I found the, that indicated fire was an inversion. And so an inversion is turning something not inside out or back and forth but it's turning something that goes forward and backwards at the same time. This is an organic inversion. What's happening is it's coming forwards towards you, but it's coming back to me at the same time. This is an inversion of an asymmetrical form. So what's inside this one? First indication is that there is a lemniscape going on in the center. Isn't that interesting? This is a three-dimensional flow form, not two-dimensional. This is the new flow form based on the third dimension. So what's inside here? Well, I was very pleased with this because here it is. This is what's inside an asymmetrical inversion based on seven inside there. And this is what it looks like. Now it has two different size circles on its ends. It's not 90 degrees. And these arcs can compare to each other are the golden mean. There's not one straight line on it. It has all curves. So another way of studying this to try to find out where this form is in the world and how it came in. This form, what are you doing with it? Yeah, uh, like I said, uh, when I put it through earth, water, air, and fire, I was trying to find out what it where it came from three-dimensionally and where it is in the world. That's what I'm trying to find out. I mean, there has to be something behind this other than the things I've shown you. Well, one of the major things that I found, as you saw before, is that I was able to put it into a cube. Now, if I put all of these together and I stand it up, this shows where the form comes from and where it goes. Now what happens is it goes from a tetrahedron to an octahedron back to a tetrahedron. And it happens through a lawful movement in a cube. Now platonic forms put inside each other have never been done like this ever before. They've always cut the corners off at 90 degrees. This is a whole new process that anybody can start and use because the forms are now transforming through a spiral. Well, it's going from this corner to this corner in a spiral lawful movement. And the transformation to an octahedron right in the middle is the seven-sided form. And here is the middle of the whole process. And right in the middle of this process to here is another seven-sided form, which is reversed. And now we go back to the tetrahedron. So this process is extremely important because this is the lawful progression of reversals. And the one organ in our body that loves this process is the heart. So you've mentioned the heart. Yes. What does this form have to do with the heart? Yeah, um, th that's one of the first clues I had was I had this uh, model of the heart. And when I was looking at the end of the heart, which is called the apex, I noticed there were three lines. It was one edge here, an edge here, and an edge here. I noticed that there were three edges. 
I thought, oh my goodness, there are three edges, so maybe there is some relationship to this with the heart because I noticed that when the edges when the edges went up, they flattened out, and that's what the form does. Yeah, as the form as the edge goes up, it flattens out. So that was my first clue: how the edge goes up and then it flattens out. That's what this model showed, but in an organic way, not uh, geometric. The next thing I did was, I, as I told you before, is I put it into three dimensions. This was the bubble way back. Okay, so if that is the shape of the heart, this is right off the internet. This shows you. Look at the similarity in shape. Remember, this is minimum surfaces. Okay, and of course, this is the other ventricle. This is the right ventricle. This is the left ventricle. This is a really, really massive muscle, whereas this other one on the right is very thin. And most doctors will cut that off, or people who study the heart, and it falls on the floor like a napkin, and they study this one. I didn't do that. I wanted to know about this. So I studied this one. And I found out that this form, the seven-sided form, is actually a vortex. 